All right, let's get this moved away real quick. There we go. All right, so hello, my name is Noah Haskins, and this is my capstone project PowerPoint regarding the five questions of the alternate minimums of part 121. So this is by me it's for class aviation 350, and that is our airline operations. All right, so first thing is let's overlook our conditions. So our conditions are as we are in a CRJ 200 forward slant alpha. Forward slant alpha is that we have a mode C transponder on board, but notice we are not a slant golf. So we'll talk about that later. Uh, the forward slant golf is our GPS that is not equipped on board. So we'll see in the next slide why that applies to us. Uh, the deferral, or in other words, uh, that's inoperative, is our flight director and our autopilot. So we'll take note of that with our approaches. And we have a notum here, which is for the ILS-22 right glide soap is out of service. All right, so we have our dispatch release here. And overlooking this, we have our alternate that's filed, which is uh, Little Rock, excuse me, Baton Rouge. We're going to Little Rock as our destination, our alternate is Baton Rouge. And our ETA, which is really important for us, is uh, 1800. So we have our TAF below here looking at this. We have our um, TAF for Baton Rouge. Now it's valid for the 12th of 1200 to the 13th of 1200. So 24-hour TAF. All right, so the one that's most important for us is our ETA. So we have our ETA at 1800. Now, if we look down here at our from temporary on the 12th from 1800 to the 2100 on the 12th the weather is going to be one statute miles we have thunderstorm uh, with rain showers well rain uh, and it's broken at 500 and scattered at 2000 cumulonimbus clouds so we can see here that the important numbers for us is it is uh, forecasted at our alternate during our estimate time arrival to be 500 foot ceiling it's the lowest here broken and one statue mile visibility. So we'll note that it's 501. That's going to be important for us for looking at our next slides for approaches and the weather that we need to be looking for. And we need to be below that for alternate minimums to be able to be legal to file um, Baton Rouge as an alternate dispatching. All right, so let's look at the first one here. We have Baton Rouge, which is the RNAV. Now, already looking at this, we know that we are not a Ford St. Golf, so we have no GPS on board. So our nav approaches our GPS. So this automatically will rule out, as we can see at the bottom here, it's not authorized for CRJ 200 slant alpha. So hence runway four left, one three, two two right, and three one our nav approaches are all not applicable to us. So I'm gonna move on. Now, Baton Rouge, we have an approach here. It's ILS or localizer runway one three. Now we are category class Delta. So um, we're gonna be looking at that here and we are looking and looking back at our notums. It was only ILS two two right glide soap out of service. So which in that case, it's not runway one three ILS or localizer. So for this ILS to be working for us, we'll take note of that. Um, soon, but we're going to be in class Delta here. Now, we do not have flight director and autopilot. So right down here, we can notice that in this box, the one is the RVR 1800 with flight director, autopilot, or HUD to decision altitude. Well, we don't have them active. It's inoperative. So we're going to be sticking with these minimums here. So a half statue mile for our category Delta, and then our ILS, we have a um, had above touchdown at 200 feet. So that's going to be numbers we're going to use. And we'll be talking about those numbers shortly with our starting with our nav one. All right, here's our second one here. We have the ILS or localizer only two to right. Um, our professor was generous enough to already take note here and help us out that our ILS two to right glide slope is out of service. So we can see here ILS. Um, the glide slope is not going to be appropriate for us since our glide slope's out. So we're going to go to the localizer. Now we're category delta again. So we're going to box this here and write that down. We're at three quarters statue mile and it's 410 foot high above touchdown. 
All right, now we got the VOR four left. So we're looking here, we have we want the lowest, which is going to be 551 height above touchdown. We're kind of class delta, so it's one and three quarters statue miles. The VOR DME runway two to right. We are also category delta, one and a quarter statue miles. So it's also 410 feet high above touchdown. So this is a straight in. Now we're going to talk about our NAV1. That's our first thing we're going to go to is our NAV1 alternate minimums. So first, our second question now is what are the lowest legal NAV alternate weather minimums for um, Baton Rouge for our NAV1? So the rule is for NAV1, we add 400 feet to our height above touchdown and one statue mile to the approach plate visibility. And we're gonna be choosing the lowest out of all these. So looking over here, we have the ILS 1.3. That was the first plate we looked at. For Delta, it was 200 foot um, HAT and a half statue mile. So we add 400 feet to that, it's gonna be 600. And then adding one statue mile is one and a half. That looks pretty good. Looking down here, we have localizer 2 to right, 410 and three quarter statue miles. So we again add 400 and one statue miles. We're looking at 810 and one and three quarters. VOR DME 2 to right, it's 410, one and a quarter statue miles, which would be 810 and two and a quarter statue miles. And the VOR for left is 551 and one and three quarter statue miles, which would equal to 951 and two and three quarter statue miles. So overlooking at all of this, you know, we want to get the lowest. Um, legal alternate weather minimums. So our lowest in the um, approaches that are available for us that we can do with our conditions is gonna be the ILS 1.3. So we're looking at our alternate minimums here at 600 feet and one and a half statute miles. The weather is 500 feet ceiling and one statute miles visibility. And what we have here is we can only get down to 600 feet and one and a half statute miles to be able to dispatch that as a legal alternate for NAV1 rule. So under this method, under NAV1, we do not meet uh, our legal minimums as we are higher than what the weather is uh, prescribed to be at our ETA, look, uh, according to the TAP in the past. So in this case, we're gonna move over to the NAV2 method. So the third question is, what are the lowest legal NAV alternate weather minimums for Baton Rouge? So this rule is we, for NAV2, we add 200 feet, half statue miles to the highest visibility and height above touchdown of two different approaches, NAV aids, runways, um, whichever is the two difference of all those, we are going to get the highest of the two. So what we have here is we have the ILS 1.3 again, so it's 200 and half statue mile. So if we add 200 foot to the HAT, the height above touchdown, we have 400 feet and now one statue mile. We have the localizer two to right. 410 and three quarter statute miles. So we're looking at 610 and like one and a quarter statute mile. The VOR and DME is 2 2 right, 410 and one and a quarter statute mile. This would then revert to we have 610 feet and one and a quarter statute mile. And lastly, our VOR for left 551 and one and a quarter, three quarter statute miles on the approach plate. So that's going to give us we have now with the NAV2 rule 751 and 200 and a quarter statue miles. So looking at all these, we wanna select the highest of two. So we're looking at first, you know, what's gonna give us the lowest of the feet or basically the height above touchdown and then the uh, statue miles of visibility. And we gotta make sure though, they're both two different nav aids, two different runways and two different types of approaches. So overlooking at all these, we have the ILS, which is one three. The localizer two to right. Now notice they're both two different runways and they're two different types of approaches because they're at using two different nav aids. So one is going to be at the uh, one runway one three, one is at two to right. Um, so two different frequencies I mean they're two different nav aids. So hence uh, they're also two different runways. So this is going to work for us. So looking at this scenario, we have 401 statue mile and 610 and one quarter statue mile. Um, the rest of them we look, we have 610 and one and three quarters and 71 and two and a quarter. So those are a little bit higher. Um, so looking at these two, this would be our best options, the ILS one three and the localizer two two right. 
So that's 400 feet in one statue mile, 610 in one and a quarter statue mile. So out of these two, we select the highest, and that's going to be our alternate weather minimums to enter to for our dispatch. So that's going to give us with NAV2 method, it's 610 foot um, minimum, and then one and a quarter statue mile of our visibility. It's, hence, these are the two higher than these values here. So we're going to look down here, and we still have our weather is 500 feet in one statue mile. And well, with this NAV2 method, all we can get with our available approaches and based off the conditions is 610 feet, one and a quarter statue mile. So answering the question here, it does not meet under the legal alternate for Baton Rouge under NAV2. So that's our values. And so that question in number four is that it is not able to be used um, as an alternate under the listing conditions because we are, again, with NAV1 and NAV2, we are both still higher with both our values there than 500 feet and one statue mile of our weather. We need to be below that. And so we cannot, for our planning purposes, use Baton Rouge as an alternate dispatched uh, airport. Now, the last question is, you know, what if we take out the NOTAM? So what would be the lowest legal alternate weather minimum that is not affected by a NOTAM? So again, we have our weather at 500 feet and one statue mile. Nav one is at 400 feet, one statue mile. We talked about that. So let's look at the lowest. Well, now we're not using the localizer anymore. We have our glide slope that is now active again. So this turns us to now we can use the ILS for that approach. Now ILS for two two right is now 200 feet and it's actually three and a three eighths of a statue mile for our category Delta. So this is 600 feet and one and three eighths statue mile. So under these conditions here still, it is not legal under associated conditions for NAV1 because our weather is 500 feet and one statue mile. So we're gonna go to NAV2 again. Now it's adding 200 feet and a half statue mile to our highest of the two. So we look here, we have the ILS13 and then ILS22 right, since as we change that, and then the rest of the values, VR, DME, and for 22 right, and VR4 left are still remaining the same. So this actually changes for us now because we're not using the localizer, we're using the ILS. So if we look at that one specifically, the ILS22 right, it is now adding 200 to the already associated 200 on the approach plate. And it's 3.8 statue miles. So our value is going to go now to 410 foot ceiling and our minimums and 7.8 statue mile as we're added half statue amount of that. So looking at all these values here for a NAV2 rule, these are two different, it's still the same approach nav -A type, but there are two different runways. So runway one, three, and runway two, two, right. So there are hence different frequencies. It's something that we can use. There are different runways, uh, different nav -A from different frequency. And so if we're looking at there, we have 400 feet and one statue mile and 410 and 78 statue mile. Now we want the highest of our minimums. So that would be 410, which is the ILS 22 right. And then our highest of the visibility, which is actually the ILS 13, which is one statue mile. Now these meet under or equivalent to our weather, 410 feet in one statue mile. So this is under 500 feet in one statue mile. So we can use, if this condition, we didn't have the NOTAM, we can file now uh, Baton Rouge. It is legal alternate to file, or I keep saying file, but dispatch under these associated conditions under the NAV2 method. Appreciate your time. This is a really fun uh, lesson and uh, capstone project to do. I really enjoyed doing it and I learned a lot through this and I believe I can really take this to um, my career goals as an airline pilot in the future. And I just really appreciate this class. Thanks for your time. We'll see you here.